Hey guys, my name is Wes, and you're watching Wesicles TV, and today I'm reviewing Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast is a 2017 live-action fantasy, family, romance film starring Emma Watson, Dan Stevens, Luke Evans, Josh Gad, Kevin Kline, and many, many more. It is directed by Bill Condon and is the latest in a recent trend of Disney live-action adaptations of classic Disney animated films. And I won't say that this is the best of the bunch up front. I think that Cinderella still holds that mark. I really, really think Cinderella is just a great film. And this is a good movie. It's a good film, but I don't think it holds up to that level. It does have the benefit that it takes, in my opinion, the best of the animated Disney films and puts them to live action. So you already have a story people love. They love Beauty and the Beast. The animated one is so good that it was nominated for Best Picture back in, I think, 91? Back in the early 90s? That's crazy. And so you get to adapt that, which is a huge bonus. On top of that, they get picture-perfect casting. Literally, I cannot think of a single person you take out of this film to replace them with somebody else. Not the background extra who's so far back you can't see their face. Like, you replace them with somebody? No. You leave everybody in because they were great in their roles. I will say, actually, though, that my favorite characters in this film, as odd as it is, is LeFou and Gaston. I thought that every time they were on screen, I was having the most fun. There was plenty of fun to be had through the songs and everything else in this film, but whenever those two were on screen, whether it was a song number or it was just a story point, watching those two, they have such great chemistry as actors. They were so charismatic on the screen. I had the most fun with them. That was my favorite parts of this film. I will say, though, that... The song numbers throughout the film are really good. You take the classic songs, you you know, put them in here, and the score behind them were beautiful. So you have highlight moments in this film. But rather than go on and on about, you know, basically saying like, oh, well, they take this great story and they place it in, which I also like that they added some small things as well. Um, the mask, the doctor mask, and showing kind of what happened to her mom. That was a cool touch, uh, but... Overall, I, I want to move on to the next part because I'm just going to keep talking about the actors and I don't have time for all 12 leads that were great in this film. But, the negatives. So first off, I will say that, yes, they are taking pretty much the exact story from the animated film and I'm not judging them on that. I'm getting my negative out of the point that I think it translates better in the animated feature than it did in this version. Now, what I mean by that is that the Beast... And I'm not, I don't know if this is spoiling or not. So, his transition from being kind of really, really mean and a dark and brooding person to I'm happy and I think I might like love this person and I want to make this person happy is so fast. And maybe in the anime future I could buy that a little bit more. But in this film, I just it hit me like very odd. I was like, that was such a quick personality shift. I just don't buy that. Um, I feel like they needed an extra 10 minutes of watching a slower transition to, oh, we have some common ground, oh, this. And they do have a common ground moment, but it felt like that was already after this point where he was already, like, happy. And so I was like, switch the personality shift a couple minutes later, and allow more of the common ground stuff to happen, and I would have bought that more. And it's not a huge negative, it's one of my bigger ones, but it's not my biggest negative. Uh, my biggest one is probably that certain scenes felt a little bit too long, and certain time frames felt like they were rushed because other time frames took too long. So the first half of this movie pretty much is the first day and a half that she's there. Since the movie starts to where this is like two days. And then I feel like there's a giant rush of time going by. And this is how they're, you know, bonding. And you just get this huge rush of time that flies by pretty quickly. And then you get the end. And so I'm like, my whole... My way my mind was interpreting the time was kind of wrong. I was like, okay, so wait, we're now we're here, or has this been this long? If it's been this long, then their relationship, I don't buy that. Like, I don't buy that they can just fall in love that quickly. If it takes place over that long of time, I'm like, why do we spend so much time in this first day and a half, two days that she was there, just to rush over watching the actual romance part of that? So that was, either way, I got a negative with it, and it bothers me. And I just, I, for one, I want to know which one it is. And for two, no matter which one it is, it still is going to bother me. My other negatives are pretty minor. Um, I was really worried coming into this film that the CG, especially on the Beast himself, was not going to be good. The trailers looked terrible as far as his CG went. He looked kind of plastic and uh, like he was, I was very weird. I don't really know how to describe it. I didn't like it. I was relieved when I started watching the film and said, oh, actually, you know what? It looks pretty good. 
and then it didn't look pretty good. And then it looked good again, and it, then it didn't. I would have preferred taking our month or two months to fine-tune that, because there were moments where he looked wonderful. I'm not saying, like, Jungle Book level wonderful, but, like, he looked really, really good. And the CG, I bought it, and I was falling into this character. I was like, okay, I see you, that this is a character. It's not a CG character, it's a person there. And then the next scene, literally, like, uh, the next frame, like, we've got to cut the angle, look at this way now. And I'm like, nope, no, that's CG. And there was a really harsh moment where they're outside in the courtyard, and she's walking with him, and they're outside in this ice courtyard, and I'm like... I, it looks like she's in a green screen. It looks like she's alone by a green screen, and it's really bothering me because they have to use like a, a frame of depth to like provide that he's there as well, and they got the background, and it just did not mesh at all with my brain. I just I'm trying to connect it, and I'm like, no, it looks terrible. And after noticing it a few times, I was constantly keen in on it, and it bothered me throughout the entire film. That's gonna be a pretty big drop just because it does actually really, like, and the more I think about it, it's more and more bothersome to me that there were certain frames that, like, he looked really good, and then he just didn't, and I wish they would have t fixed that up a little bit. Other than that, uh, I think that there were a few songs that ran just a little bit too long. Uh, I was really enjoying certain ones. Uh, the Year My Guest one, I was really having fun with it. Like, this is a catchy song. I, yeah, yeah, I like this. I like this. And then I just kept going on and on and on, and I'm like, uh, and it got more cartoony, but not in a good way. Like, it, like, if felt jokey and little kiddish and I was getting immersed and it pulled me out of it and I guess that's my biggest issue is the fact that if I'm looking over everything is that I had moments where I was getting really immersed into the film and then I was pulled out of the immersion and once I was pulled out it took me a little while to get back into it and my brain was thinking about the issues instead of being able to just fall into the movie where a great movie once I'm immersed, I'm just in it until the movie's over, and I go, wow, that was something. Jungle Book, Cinderella, I was immersed in those films from start, basically, until finish, and I loved those films. This movie, because I kept getting pulled out of it, I think that's the reason why I just think it's good. I still, like, the story's good, the acting's good, the characters are portrayed perfectly in my mind. Like It's just those small things that have a bigger impact because I couldn't keep the immersion. And so my overall score for Beauty and the Beast is a 7... 7.3-ish, like in that low 7s range. I'm pretty comfortable with that. I don't think it's going to rise at all in future viewings. I don't think it'll drop, though, either. But that's just my opinion, and I want to hear yours. What did you think about it? Let me know in the comment section down below, and while you're down there, click that like button right over here. Click subscribe right over here to subscribe to West Nichols TV and get more of my reviews or other types of videos. You can follow me on Twitter at WestNichols14. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great night. Bye.